In 2015, I left my startup, and at the same time, I split with my boyfriend, which made me very sad. In order to make myself even more sad, my body has decided to gain 10 kilos in just one month. I was shocked, especially that I had living this healthy and fit lifestyle. But I cut calories and sugars and exercised more and more and more, and my weight wasn't decreasing. It was actually still increasing. I felt very bad, anxious and depressed, because I basically felt like I lost a control over my life. What is more, I started to forget things. I started to easily lose my concentration, which was the point when I decided to go and take a blood test. It took me a year to do that. And finally, after a year, I found out that I am suffering from hypothyroidism, which is a genetic tendency that was tricked out by the amount of stress I had in 2015. Well, the question is, uh, since I saw all symptoms, why wasn't I able to figure out that I might be sick and just gain a control quicker? Well, the question is, am I blind? The truth is that I clearly didn't have enough medical knowledge. And also, young people in today's world have so many things to deal with every day that we actually don't have time to analyze everything. But my disorder has inspired me to actually go and research, and I became interested in wearable devices and in tech that can track our health. And we are entering a brave new world in which technology will help us to detect any diseases that we might have. In 2018, almost 14,000 patent applications were filed to European Patent Office. Silicon Valley is becoming very interested in MedTech. Uh, in between 2013 and 17, Apple, Alphabet, and Microsoft filed 300 patent applications in MedTech. And how would they do that? How would they go into a new industry? Actually, in the same way as they enter any other industry, this is a part of a bigger strategy to strengthen their business. Well, they will offer us more consumer products and collect more data about us and offer us ads. As an example, Apple has created Apple Watch, beautiful device. We don't actually think that it's a device. It's part of us, part of our fashion. When we wear clothes, we are not thinking we are wearing clothes. They are just here, covering us and hopefully looking OK. The same with Apple Watch. But at the same time, it is tracking our activities. And it will be tracking our health, thanks to Apple heart study conducted in cooperation with Stanford University, this device will be able to track our shell fibrillations and other arrhythmias. Apple is also focusing on other diseases like Parkinson's disease. They allow us sight tests with iPhones and hearing tests with AirPods. Another company, actually a group co of companies, we all know Alphabet as a creator of Google search and Android OS. But at the same time, they lead great project as Project Jacquard in cooperation with Levi's. This project is aiming to make textiles conductors. As, and as an ultimate goal, it's aiming to give designers the tool to make a fashion intelligent. They also develop TensorFlow machine learning libraries that are tools for programmers to create a thing that we call AI. They own DeepMind, a company that is aiming to solve world's problems by using AI itself, including diagnostics. By this day, Google Venture has backed about 60 medtech startups.
Microsoft, on the other hand, has cooperated with the University of Pittsburgh Med Medical Center in order to create a virtual assistant that would take notes between a patient and a doctor and then summarize uh, their conversation and send it to both sides. They also focus on devices that are tracking, tracking chronic diseases, like eyeglasses, that may track your pulse at the same time. Facebook and Amazon are not staying behind. Amazon patented the new version of Alexa that knows whether you are ill and can offer you to buy medicines. Facebook is now tracking our health through Facebook groups. But honestly, big tech are not the only ones that are interested in health industry. Fashion is also interested in health. Actually, they will all create devices that will be better and better, collect more and more data in the future, and solve many problems that we have, including problems with our health. As an example, Wearable X and Ambiotex created intelligent clothes that allow you to be better at sport. OLED Care created SOC that tracks infants' heart rate and oxygen levels. Lumia created a, a jacket that is aiming to help us to maintain the most optimal body temperature. And these are great promises for us. If I had had this kind of technology back in 2015, it would have taken days to diagnose my hypothyroidism, and I lost a year of my life. It offers a hope to billions of people around the world. But to be fully fair, we should ask ourselves, why these companies, especially big tech companies, are working on medtech solutions? Well, it's all in their business models. They are offering us products and collecting our data. They are making money thanks to us watching Kylie Jenner on the internet, as well as cute cats. They know where we live. They know where we leave our homes every day in the morning, and they know where we go every day in the morning. They know what we write to our friends. They can recognize our voice. They know our faces. They have photos of our faces from every possible angle, including photos of our iris. They know our personalities, and thanks to that, they know our next steps and can manipulate them. And great use of data has made big tech company founders billionaires among the richest people in the world. There's a big money. Five out of ten, the richest people in the world are tech companies founders. Ten out of 26, the richest people in the world are tech companies founders. These 26 richest people own as many assets as the 3.8 billion people on this planet, which means 50% of global population. I assume and hope that these people want to make our lives better. But we have to remember that at the same time, they're just businessmen. So let's stop for a minute and think what kind of business possibilities lay in our bodies, our sweat, our fitness goals, in our diseases, gene history. And it's actually very exciting. So let's stop with all this, start with all these bad goodies, ads. Wouldn't that be awesome if these companies could offer us even more personalized ads based on how hungry we are or how we couldn't sleep at night, so we are more willing to buy that t-shirt that we don't actually need? Or if some guy could win a presidential election in some country because he tricked us into voting on him thanks to the data we provide. It actually happened. But as this is, you know, like we, we have all seen that before. There's much, much more. Wouldn't that be awesome if 
these companies could start running their own insurance companies or just cooperate with ones and then provide them with our data in order to these companies to decide whether they should pay or pay, shouldn't pay insurance. So if we broke our leg, somebody can decide that he will not pay us, pay us insurance because we happen to exercise just two and not three times a week. Or our kids may pay higher insurance costs because we don't actually wake up and squat every day. If countries decide to nationalize data, wouldn't that be fun to be called up to fight in the war because we are healthy and fit enough to do that or to be manipulated into going into the war because we are fit enough to do that? There's a big money, big opportunities, guys, like super exciting. Woo Wouldn't that be awesome to be able to choose students to, for universities? based on their data, as an example, based on the way they look. Because algorithms know whether you're interested, uh, whether you're intelligent, just based on how you look. Mixing that with our health data, like great possibilities, like again, big money, only great students. Or if these countries could create a perfect society, and go and tell you that you cannot date that particular person because your kids may have a tendency for, for example, hypothyroidism. Well, if you guys think that this is all just science fiction, just remember that about 20 years ago, the most intelligent thing that people were doing with their phones was playing a one-dimensional game called Snake. And just a few years ago, a guy called Donald Trump won the presidential election in the US and the UK voted for Brexit, partly thanks to a great use of data. We live in a world where people are inserting microchips under their skin and it's all happening in Europe. China is monitoring their citizens and giving them social credit points based on what algorithm says. They are monitoring kids at school and judging whether these school kids are interested or bored. So my last question is, who owns data? Who owns data about me? Is it me? Is it you? Is it that company or that, or that country? We should start this discussion. We should ask the politician that we vote for. What is your opinion about that? Discuss it aloud. And most of all, we cannot let big companies to lobby this issue. Be the lobbyists. Do not let the minority to do that in order to actually have this control. Remember that your body is your last fortress of your privacy. And hopefully you can still keep your privacy without compromising your health. Thank you.